my name is Emery Berger. I'm a professor at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I co-lead a group called Plasma, which is Programming Languages and Systems at Massachusetts. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Python performance matters. So all of you are familiar with these languages, uh, Fortran, C, C++, that I like to call metal languages. They're metal because they were really designed for maximum performance of computers, really, really close to the metal. These were languages that were really popular. I mean, they continue to be in use. But um, there basically was this phenomenon that arose around the 80s where computers just started getting faster and faster. Uh, and it seemed like it was going to go on forever. And so what was happening, of course, was Moore's Law uh, and Denard scaling. And every year, you'd buy new hardware. And by God, your code just ran faster automatically. So optimizing your code didn't seem like that important anymore since computers were just getting faster and faster. And we entered a time where the meta languages kind of moved off to the side and were replaced with what I like to call irrational exuberance languages. Uh, these all came around pretty much in the 90s, um, and some of them we continue to use today, like Python. So these languages have a bunch of characteristics in common. They're all really bloated in terms of how much memory they consume. So here are some examples of how much memory Python consumes versus C++ for the same data structures. Uh, my favorite is the third one about the size of an empty dictionary, which is now 64 bytes, which is an improvement, even though it's nearly three times as much as C++. It used to be 240 bytes, uh, which is coincidentally almost exactly as much as Homer Simpson weighs. So they're bloated, but there's another problem with these languages, which is famously they are slow. So here's an extreme example. So if you write a naive matrix matrix multiply in Python, and you set that to be 1, um, the C version, just a straight up C translation of that, runs almost 50 times faster. And if you put in some kind of standard optimizations, eventually you get to the point where it's 60,000 times faster. So a typical Python program is probably not 60,000 times slower than a C program that does the same thing, but it's generally a lot slower. So unfortunately, as you all are aware, computers aren't getting faster, right? They, this kind of ended. Uh, so Moore's Law continues, but Denard scaling unfortunately has stopped. So we've sort of topped out around 3 gigahertz, uh, which is a shame. I was really hoping for a you know, 2 million gigahertz processor, but uh, it was not to be. So this means that Python and languages like it really have a stranglehold on our performance, right? We can't expect time to solve this problem. We're going to actually have to work for it. So what do you do when you have a slow program? Normally, what you do is you reach for a profiler. And so here we have a standard profiler from Python. This is called cProfile. And it's a very traditional kind of profiler. It says, hey, how much time did I spend in this function? It's not super useful. It's not really targeted towards Python. And in particular, it's not really going to help you improve the performance of your code very much because it provides very few insights. Part of our perspective is, look, if you're a Python programmer, your goal is really to not program in Python. It's sort of like Fight Club. If you have your Python code and it's pure Python, this is bad. What you really want to do is be writing C code. But that's hard. So rather than writing C code, what you do instead is you use C libraries. These libraries are great. The Python ecosystem is full of libraries that are super high performance, like NumPy, Scikit, and TensorFlow. And so what you need as a Python programmer is a way to help you optimize your code by moving you towards the C. So we've built a profiler that does exactly that. We call it Scalene. Scalene has three sides. Uh, it does CPU profiling, it does GPU profiling, and it does memory profiling, but it does even more. So I'm going to walk you through an example. So here's a snippet of code. Uh, this is running some NumPy stuff. It creates an array. It creates an array that's filled with random numbers. Uh, this is some contributed code from someone on the net. Um, and here's what happens when you run it with Scalene. And so Scalene provides a ton of information. I'm going to walk you through it real quick. So on the left, you see CPU time. So it shows you CPU time uh, on a per-line basis or a per-function basis. But in addition, it does something new, which is it actually says, look, this is how much time was spent in the Python interpreter. This is how much time you spent running native code, that is C code. And this is how much time you ran in the system. And what your job is as a Python programmer is to find all the places where you're spending a ton of time in Python and move that to native. Likewise, we track memory consumption. Python consumes a lot of memory. Native code consumes less memory. So this is really great. You want to move your code to consuming less memory. That means you want memory consumption to all be native. 
It also shows memory usage over time, which can give you insight into what is going on in your program. So uh, on the x-axis, you have time, and on the y-axis, you have memory consumption, and so you can see that's what these graphs indicate. Uh, and it does this for the whole program as well as on a line-by-line -line basis. Um, it also does two other things. So one, it introduces a novel metric that we call copy volume. So copy volume is the megabytes per second of copying that is being done by your Python program. And so what's going on? What, what is happening? Why would there be copying? Well, a major performance problem in Python code is when you accidentally cross between Python land and C land. And so if you're in Python land, that's, it's bloated, but fine. But if you move your native code, which is really efficient, into Python code, it has to copy it all out into these giant data structures. And then you may end up moving it back again. So this is a dangerous place in terms of performance. It can really have a huge hit. Finally, this code doesn't actually use the GPU, but if it had, then scaling would display utilization in percentage by line of code and how much memory is consumed. So obviously you want to also try to move your code to making maximum utilization of the GPU and minimizing the amount of memory that's on the GPU. Let's focus in on this particular line of code here, which is really where all the action is happening in this program. On the left, you see the CPU time um, and the CPU time is 58%, it turns out, is running in native code. That is a lot of time, but it's in native code. And like I said, native code is good, right? Native code is where you want to be spending your time. Yes, it's a lot of time, but you're doing it in the right place. Likewise, memory consumption. It's allocated two gigs of memory, but it's native memory. So that part is good. Um, but we can see more details as we look further to the right. You can see that not only is this line 83% of memory activity, it has this sawtooth pattern. So it's allocating memory, freeing memory suddenly, allocating memory, freeing memory suddenly. That's not good, right? You want to be allocating memory and using it and then freeing it. Uh, and so that indicates something is going on. And if you look just to the right of that, you see copy volume, and it's copying a ton. It's 250 megabytes per second of copying. And this is inefficient and probably wasteful. So what it suggests is that it's creating some data structure, copying stuff into it, and throwing it away, and doing this over and over again. And if we look at the code, it turns out that's exactly what it's doing. So the programmer who wrote this code used np.array, which is a function that takes a Python array and turns it, or Python list, and turns it into a NumPy array. And um, they applied it to something that is already a NumPy array. And it turns out that unfortunately, NumPy by default doesn't treat that as a no-op. It actually copies the whole array. So what it's doing is it's allocated an extra, extra space for the original, copies it into it, and then throws away the old one. And it's doing this over and over again. So luckily, this is really easy to fix. All we do is we take the np.array that's redundant, and we remove it. And this is uh, immediately reflected in what happens when the scaling displays. First, you get a significant drop in execution time, right? It runs six seconds faster. So you can see the sawtooth pattern um, has vanished altogether, right? It's consuming its memory. It's not doing this jerkiness. Uh, and copy volume has gone away. Uh, and the maximum memory consumption now has dropped from 3 gigs, gigs to 1.6 gigs. So uh, not bad for a few minutes' work. One of the things that we wanted to do with scaling was, you know, make sure it actually was profiling correctly. Um, and we were somewhat surprised to discover that a bunch of profilers in, that are available for Python that are in the ecosystem are wildly inaccurate. Uh, if they were perfectly accurate, like scaling is, the sort of bigger dots that are on this graph, they would hug this diagonal line perfectly. And this has significant ramifications. If your profiler tells you, hey, this is where you're spending a lot of your time, and you optimize that code, and it's wrong, then your program is not going to get any faster. So accuracy really matters. However, obviously you care, obviously you care about accuracy, you care about details, but you also care about execution time. So if you've got a program that is already slow and your profiler makes things slower, that's really bad. And so we found that there are some profilers that can slow down execution of your Python program when you're profiling it by almost 40x, which is insane, right? You have a three second program, now it takes 120 seconds. Um, and imagine if it was taking minutes. I should stress these profilers do very little. They only report CPU time. They don't break it down into native code versus Python code and so on. Um, they don't, in particular, report memory or anything else, much less GPU. There is a memory profiler uh, called Memory Profiler uh, that's widely used, 
And Memory Profiler turns out to slow down programs by easily 100x. So in this case, it slows down a five second program to a 12 minute execution time. Uh, so if you have a program that's actually consuming some reasonable amount of time, it's really intractable to use a system like Memory Profiler. So let me dig in a little bit into what's going on in Scaly and how it works and how it achieves these, uh, th its ability to be precise and fast. What's going on with Memory Profiler is that Memory Profiler instruments every single allocation that is made by your Python program. So it goes and it says, hey, I've got an allocation. Record a bunch of information. What line was it at? How much space? Blah, blah, blah. I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. It does this over and over again. The problem is Python allocates memory like crazy. It's constantly creating and deleting objects. And so you can imagine if you're doing that all the time and you're adding all this overhead to every individual operation, it's no huge surprise that it's more than 100x slowdown. By contrast, Scanline implements a kind of sampling. So the sampling is basically based on thresholds. So nothing happens when Scalene is running and you're within a one megabyte window. But if you cross that megabyte, it records the information and then you have to move up or down by another megabyte again before it records any additional information. And this turns out to be super low overhead and highly accurate. It captures especially large swings in memory consumption and ignores very small ones, which really generally don't matter anyway. Uh, so this gives you high precision and high performance. There's an aspect to Python which complicates, actually there are many aspects to Python which complicate uh, profiling. This is just one, but I'm gonna show you how we take this problem in Python, uh, which is a challenge, and make lemonade out of lemons. So the challenge is that uh, the way scaling works and the way other relatively efficient profilers work is they use sampling. So they're constantly interrupting the running program uh, like every 0.01 seconds and they look around and say, what line am I on? And they rinse and repeat and eventually you get a good view of where the program is spending its time. Unfortunately, Python actually hijacks signal delivery. And so it only checks signals when Python is running. So as long as you're running per pure Python, you're good. But as soon as you go and you run some code that's native, Python effectively goes to sleep none of those signals get delivered. So if you have a Python program and it's running and it's 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, it hits C and it goes to sleep for the whole time the C code is running and then resumes. So if you're counting on that sampling to tell you where your time is spent and you're running any C code, then it's going to wildly underestimate the execution time and give you just wrong results. So that's obviously a problem that we need to address. So we solve this problem in Scalene and we get extra benefit out of it. So our approach is every single time we take an interrupt, we record the time. So we say, oh, this happened at this time, this happened at this time. And as long as Python is executing, then this is all fine. If we wake up and we discover, however, wow, there was this big delay that happened between the last time we got a signal and now, we attribute that delay to C. We say that's because it was running C code, right, or native code. And so what this means is we're able to not only take into account the execution time spent by C, right, to make the profile accurate, but we're also able to, uh, to delineate, look, this is a code that spent this much time in Python, this much time in native, and we have a similar technique that we use for tracking system time. So to sum up, I've talked about Scalene. Scalene is a new profiler targeted at Python. It's intended to give actionable information to Python programmers to help them optimize their code. You know, Python profiling is just not the same thing as traditional native code profiling. You need more information. So Scalene provides this information. It breaks down CPU time into Python time, native time, and system time. It does the same thing for memory consumption, has detailed tracking of memory usage. It adds this copy volume metric and keeps track of GPU utilization and peak memory. It has very low overhead. And it's quite easy to use. And I encourage all of you out there who are using Python uh, to free yourself from the stranglehold of Python and make your Python programs run nearly as fast as they've been written in a metal language. Thanks for your attention.